But what I'm going to talk about today is managing turkeys in agricultural landscape. That's an area which I've worked in with quail quite a bit, and it translates over a lot to wild turkeys. Now, another interesting thing, if you haven't figured it out between the first two speakers, by the end of this presentation, you should have a good idea that we're all really talking about the same thing when it comes down to turkey management, management to produce turkeys, not necessarily to attract turkeys. Um, we're going to cover a lot of the same issues, a lot of the same management practices, but not in the woods and more open areas that you may have on a property. Uh, not too much around here, but when you get into some uh, agricultural landscapes where it's nothing but ag, you have some limitations in terms of habitat. And this goes not only for turkeys, but also for, uh, from a quail state. Generally what you see is a lack of herbaceous cover, ground cover. All that stuff is about waist high and below. You know, where bir uh, birds are getting their insects, getting their seeds, nesting in, and so forth. Shrug <coughs> cover, or more. Uh, uh, importantly, you see from some of these pictures, there's just no old fence rows, no uh, uh, old fallow areas which, which have been t temporarily taken out of production and so forth. If you take a look at, at this photo relative to turkeys, there's not a lot of woods in that landscape. There's a few pockets here and there, a few isolated pockets intermixed in a whole bunch of, of, of agricultural <coughs> land, whether it's grazing or row crop. Um, generally what we're looking at, and this goes whether you're in forested or open lands, is diversity. You get plant diversity, diversity in age classes of plant communities, diversity in woods versus open land, um, and this whole <coughs> interspersion and juxtaposition. <coughs> Having all your stuff is easily accessible to birds. You don't want all your nesting habitat on this section and three miles away in the property if you have a large property have all your brood ring habitat down there. You've got to mix that stuff up so each animal or group of uh, uh, birds can access all, all they need, food, cover, and water uh, requirements that they have. What is pretty much a truism all around, whenever you're managing for turkeys or quail or deer, monocultures of anything are rarely <coughs> ever good. Okay? Now, now, an important thing to realize, and, and, and I know, I think Claude and Ted have hit upon this, is a lot of management, regardless of what you do, we'll be talking about turkeys, is really managing succession, okay? And, and, and when we manage for brood rearing habitats, which typically occur about the first year after a burn or, or, or some type of solar distance uh, disturbance, or uh, 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 Nesting habitat, which tends to be about you know three, four, five years, where you get a little bit more of a brushy component mixed in with your grasses, that's on a gradient, a successional gradient, and all we're doing is managing that successional gradient or that piece of property in a specific successional uh, or part of that successional gradient. Okay, if you do management and you walk away from it. You know, that bird rearing habitat, a few years down the road, is going to transition into nesting habitat. That's probably what we want to need to do. However, once it starts going up that succession of gradient, it's going to work out of the nesting habitat, and, and, and thus the quality is going to decline. It's going to get in too much wood, it's going to shade out that understory, you're going to lose the grasses, you're going to lose the forbs, and it become, eventually becomes a, a uh, stand of trees. Because they're the real bottleneck to a, a turkey population. Okay, this, these are some average breaks in that success. Of our first nest uh, attempts, the re-nesting. You know, if they do do re-nest, you know, a little bit more variability in there. Uh, but the real hang-up is look at this poult mortality. In 14 days, you're going to lose 50 to 80 percent of your poults. Okay. <coughs> up to, from, from past to sometime in the fall, you can expect on average three quarters of them are going to die for one, one reason or another. Okay, there's a lot of variability in there, but on average, <coughs> those are some average rates that you're looking at. So, you can increase nesting success through providing ample and high quality habitat. We know that, that that's true from the literature uh, and experience. If you can increase whole uh, survival significantly through providing ample brood growing habitat, insects, uh, and so forth, you can increase pole survival. 
Um, nesting, uh, you know, a little bit about three to eight years after succession, there's a lot of variability in there. But your brood rearing is your early succession area, right after prescribed burning or disking, that soil disturbance. And here's why. Oh, well, I'll get to it in a minute. Now, you've got plenty of options, plenty of areas where you can do turkey management. You just have to look at your property or, 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 or the area that you're leasing to figure out, okay, I got a same cutover. How can I use that for turkey habitat? Okay, an old field, a 30 acre old field that, you know, we kind of taken out of production. It's overgrown right now, sweet gum. Doesn't really have much going on with it. How can we turn that area into turkey habitat? You have to really start picking and identifying uh, these areas on your property. Um, the importance of early succession, I can't stress it enough. And this goes mainly to poles. Whether you're quail chicks or turkey pole, pretty much the same, same habitat requirement. Uh, if you look at turkey poults, you know, they're, they're, they're coastal, they'll, they'll hatch out like ducklings, and, you know, they got downy feathers, and boom, they're off and running uh, within 24 hours of the mother, they're leaving that nest. Their diet, though, uh, first two weeks, pretty much all insects, okay? And that is very, very important, because they're looking for about 26, 23, 26% protein diet, and that's exactly what insects provide. Why insects are so darn important. There's a simple equation that we use. Abundant insects equals more protein that birds can easily get so they can grow feathers faster. The faster they can grow feathers, the sooner they can fly. The sooner they can fly, the sooner they can get up and roost up in trees. The sooner they can roost in trees, their survival shoots right up. Um, again, I've already kind of gotten ahead of myself. The succulent new growth and you're producing insects. If you're a turkey pole or a quail chick, you can easily navigate around through here a lot more so than if that were, say, a dense fescue uh, patch or, and so, uh, but hey, you know, some of your exotic forage sod forming grasses. It's much easier to move around, catch those bugs, which are already abundant. Okay. Um, the common practices that we tend to use in ag landscapes or open lands are going to be very similar, identical to what you will in, in most of your forested environment. Burning, disking, um, uh, using herbicides, in some cases uh, depending on where you're at grazing or light managing your grazing uh, schedule. In row crop fields, if you're doing you know, beans, corn, uh, cotton, and so forth, conservation buffers, planting those tree or shrub. Uh, kind of poems to link up habitats uh, across your property. And of course, hardwood plants and so forth, you choose to go that way. Um, one thing which I always advise folks, because uh, uh, the most popular question I get is an extension specialist, what do I plant for deer? What do I plant for quail? What do I plant for turkeys? And I've got to go through and ask, well, what's your objective? Why well, want a lot of turkeys? <coughs> okay. Is, is it really, do you want to manage for turkeys or do you want to just attract turkeys and so forth? And then from there, figure out what, what really is that landowner's objective. And again, our favorite, or at least my favorite, definitely from a quail standpoint and, and to some extent from a turkey standpoint, are these native uh, warm season grasses. You know, they're great uh, uh, vegetation structure wise. You know, if you want to get a little bit older, get some woody compound in, into them, but more from a crude grain uh, standpoint. For those benefits. And you know, if you're looking down at one of these stands uh, of native grasses, that whole clumpy this nature of the plant provides a lot of space in between those clumps where birds can freely move around. There's not a lot of litter layer down there. Um, you see, we've got some really <coughs> rainy stuff. This here is attracting a lot of bugs. And if you're a uh, 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 turkey pole, boom, boom, you go around. Jump up here, and have a bug here, zip over here, and have a bug there. Holy crap. Mom just said there's a predator. Boom. Dive into the edge more at least and burrow down. Okay. This game. Uh, I don't know if Claude or, or, or Ted 
had, had covered this, um, but using this and more for spite fire uh, to manage that succession. Again, we're, we're looking at one to two, three uh, years after some type of disc when you're burning is your broodmare habitat. Three to five to six, seven years is going to be your, your uh, nesting habitat. And after that, you got to bring it back to some stage of succession. Use it back to the beginning, starting all over. Whether you're burning in a pine forest, burning in hardwood forest, or you're burning open lands, you're doing the same thing the same way, just in a different environment. Uh, mowing. Uh, most folks in open lands, uh, or even forested lands where you're managing food, uh, 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 forest openings, have tractors. And also have bush hogs, clear the roads. By and large, mowing should, well, no, it definitely should not be your primary management tool. In some cases, yes, uh, you know, along some of the uh, 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 pine stands that Claude talked about where they opened up or daylighted those roads, I guess would be the technical forestry term. Uh, in some cases there, managing that vegetation height, you can do through uh, the timing of your mowing. Okay, so it's going to coincide, vegetation will be about that tall when those chicks are hatching off. That would be ideal uh, 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 brood rearing habitat. So you got a mowing, so you can look over that stuff, but you got poults that are well hidden. Okay, so you can use mowing, but by and large, don't make it your primary <coughs> management technique for turkeys. Uh, buffer practices, they can uh, be used uh, to increase <coughs> ag lands for turkeys. This is very, very attractive practice for producers who who want to do habitat management, but they don't want to take their entire field out of production. This kind of offers you maybe an option that instead of an either or, you kind of have your cake and eat it too. Uh, and there's a lot of farm bill programs out or, uh, programs, or programs and conservation practices that can help land art uh, uh, offset uh, some of those costs of putting these in. Uh, again, natural succession sometimes can be your best management technique. You can see what's there before you, you get into planting something. Uh, another thing which you generally recommend is don't do <coughs> everything all at once. You need to re retain some nesting and some brood rearing habitat on your property at, at any given period. Okay, so birds can actually use it. You go ahead and prescribe burn all, all your fields, the whole you know 300 acres of it of your property. You don't have a stitch of cover left for birds, okay? Pine forest, the same thing. If I burn all three here, three, four hundred acres of my property each each year or on the same schedule, <coughs> well, that creates a problem. Because you, some years you got good habitat, some years you don't. You just kind of want, it's like a mutual fund. Diversify your investment. Uh, getting again to hardwood plants depends on what you want to use them for, okay? Yeah, the, the corridors that we talked about to link up major uh, woodlots is a good idea to provide those corridors where birds uh, are more comfortable traveling through, moving from one area to another. Uh, turkeys, again, it depends on, on what landscape context you're in. If you're in a very intensive agricultural landscape, that becomes important, okay, <coughs> more so. And at a much broader scale, oftentimes there'll be m multiple properties uh, that you want to <coughs> Uh, again, we saw this earlier. Uh, but getting back to, 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 to the common themes that you've seen already, nesting habitats, brood habitat. I think by now you should have a general idea of what we're talking about when we say nesting <coughs> habitat. Like kind of partially shrubby uh, uh, or, 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 or understory of grass and forest, but interspersed with, with shrubby, woody stuff which is just starting to come up. You know, hitting that time where, yeah, we got to think about doing something before it gets out of control. You know, because if that woody, shrubby stuff gets too big, then you got to definitely come back in with a herbicide and knock it down. Um, but if you catch it early enough to fire, uh, 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 you may be able to, 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 to kill it off, depending on what time of, of year you burn and so forth. That's your nesting habitat. Your brood rank is those one to two to three years right after you burn, okay? You've, the previous two speakers have said the exact same. 